my channel where we talk about mental health and wellness. You guys will notice that my background is a little bit different, so if you guys have not checked out my moving vlog, definitely go check that out. I put a lot of work into it. It was a little bit more casual, so let me know what you guys think about that one. But today we are doing another kind of casual video. Honestly, I was planning on making a video about mental health and social media and the effects that I see with that, but unfortunately that's going to take a lot of research and I don't have time to write that all out right now. And then when I was thinking it over in the shower today, I realized that my birthday is coming up. By the time that I post this video, it will have been my birthday and I will be celebrating my birthday on the weekend that this comes out. Does that make sense? Time has just been flying by and every day kind of feels the same anymore, so I actually forgot that it was going to be my birthday. Since I want to celebrate my birthday with you guys, I want to share a little bit more about myself and things that I've learned, so I decided to do a video about the 24 things that I learned at 24. And this actually comes from inspiration uh, from a friend of mine. Her name is Yvonne Armenta. You can go check out her YouTube channel. She recently also had a birthday. She did a video all about the 30 things that she wants to do before she's 30. So go check that out and then come back here. And we're going to talk about the lessons that I've learned. In a few years, I may laugh at this, but this is at least what I've learned in the past 24 years of my life. And I think this advice might be helpful for someone. So I've written them all down on my phone, so I'm going to be reading a little bit off of my phone for this. And like I said, there are 24 of these, so we're going to go a little bit fast, but I will try my best to stay on the ones that I think a little bit more quality. So speaking of quality, the first one that I have on here is buy quality sports bras. This I learned a long time ago, but it really affects your health if you don't have a good bra or sports bra in your life. When I first moved out to California, I was using these Calvin Klein sports bras that I had gotten because I worked at a manufacturing facility that made the clothes for Calvin Klein and other types of things. So I had gotten this piece just because it was a return piece and I was using it to work out. And it was not the right size for me. I learned very quickly because I got major back pain and had to go to the doctor. The right bra will change your life. If you have the means to buy the right bra, buy the right bra, especially for working out. All right, the second one's a little bit more serious. So it says confidence comes when you switch from asking what will they think to does this match the values I stand by? This is something that I more recently have come to terms with and something I actually started talking about with my therapist is that people's opinions on me don't matter as much. Don't get me wrong, I still care and I'm still insecure about that. I'm still a people pleaser. However, I realized that recently I've changed from wondering oh, what will people think when I post this to does this reflect who I am and the values that I stand by? And if this outweighs that, then I will post it. I hope that makes sense to you guys. I definitely think this is a lesson that I've had to learn a lot about. YouTube has been super helpful for me in making me feel a little bit more confident, definitely in front of a camera and just putting myself out there. And I am so grateful to have this platform and be able to put myself out there because I've learned the most by trying to work through my thoughts and give advice and try new things. But I've also learned that I'm very susceptible to what people think of me. And so it's, given me a little bit of tougher skin to be able to say, okay, they may not like this, but it's something I like and it's something I stand by, so I'm still going to put it out there. The third one on my list is that most things heal with time. I think this is something that I've talked about before, especially when it comes to relationships. I struggled a lot with my family disapproving of the person that I was with. They don't now, but at the time they were very, very, very disapproving. My brother, my sister, everybody in my family very, very much disapproved of the person that I was with. That hurt, and I thought that this was a forever state. Again, I don't really care as much what people think about our relationship. However, I've noticed that over time they became more accepting because it just became the new reality. Something I learned in therapy is that anytime a change happens within a family, something great, whether it's somebody coming out of rehab or somebody restarting over with a new wife or something like that, the family works as an organism and so it has to shift and readapt to a new situation. For me, I became in a relationship with someone and someone that they disagreed with and the whole organism had to shift itself. That shifting part of it is where the pain came because people react very poorly to change. So that was the way that my family reacted to change at the time. However, time does happen. So as time passed, people became more comfortable with the person that I was with. 
this is true of other things in my life too. Um, forgiveness is something that came with time for me, something I've been holding on to for a very, very long time, something that deeply hurt me for a very long time. I recently was able to actually forgive and that's something that's pretty personal to me and maybe one day I'll open up about it but I never ever ever thought I would be able to forgive this individual who had hurt me in the past and one day when I was talking to my therapist I realized that's not me anymore that's not something I hold on to and it just took time and sometimes that's amazing to know that wounds will heal with time and other times it's annoying because you just wish that it would happen right now. Number four, things you're scared of may be your favorite. So I was actually scared of riding a bike for a very long time. I had a very traumatic incident when I was little. Um, traumatic in the sense of, for me, it was the first time an adult really yelled at me. I had been riding my bike on a path. An old man was in the way. I didn't know how to brake. I ran over his leg. He bled. I went down a hill. I flipped over my bike handlebars. And then he yelled at my mom. Uh, because of me. That was very traumatic for me at the time and I decided never ever to ride a bike again because I hated the way that that felt. Flash forward 20 years, I realized that that's probably not acceptable and I really wanted to learn how to ride a bike. I was really scared of riding a bike because of this silly thing that happened in my past. I just gave it a shot and honestly it's one of my favorite things to do now. All right, number five, toxic people are still people too. I know that one thing that is very popular in social media at least and like pop culture is to be like toxic people, let's just cut them out of our lives. Yes, to a certain degree, I think that's right. However, I do think that certain cases don't really let you to cut those people out of your life because maybe you're related to them. Whatever the situation may be for you, if you have to keep a toxic person in your life, definitely there's a lot of things I could say about that. They are people even if they are toxic and so if they're going through something tough just because they are toxic doesn't mean that you can't empathize with them the toxic person may be going through something hard and usually they'll complain about something and that complaining in itself can be toxic you can let them talk and complain and be hurt and just listen and you don't have to tell them that they're toxic and you don't have to change the situation for them. Just because you listen to them doesn't mean that they're right. Just because you let them say the things that are usually toxic doesn't mean they're right and it doesn't mean you're less of who you are by letting them say that. Sometimes people just need to be people and you need to let them live and feel and be hurt even if they've hurt you. All right, next one is you're not always right. This is a duh one. And I think we all know that and we all say that, but when it comes down to it, I think that a lot of times we assume that we're right because it's us, it's our minds. So therefore our view is obviously right. It's okay to be wrong. And I think we learn the most when we are wrong and when we recognize that we're wrong. All right, next one. You can pamper yourself on a regular basis and not be considered spoiled. So I, for a very, very long time, grew up in a family that struggled for money and I thought that pampering yourself was just, you know, what rich people do, what spoiled people do kind of thing and it wasn't who I was. But I wasn't ever letting myself have the good things in life. Even if it's something small, definitely treat yourself, <laughs> I know, treat yourself kind of thing. Just because you give yourself something good doesn't mean that you are bad. And I know this may not make sense to certain people, but the person who needs to hear it will hear this. You need to have the good things in life too. All right, this one's an interesting one, but the medicine that your friends are taking or family are taking aren't always right for you. So I think that's this specifically when I wrote this down had to do with birth control. So a lot of the way that women learn about birth control in their lives is because of the women that are in their lives. I only knew about the pill for m like most of the time when I was doing it and I'm still on the pill to be honest with you guys. I was just never, never taught that there were any other ways of taking birth control and that Birth control isn't the end-all be-all. I thought the pill was the only way to do things because my family had done it, my friends were on it, that's all that I knew, but there are other options for you. And I think that it's important to talk to your doctor about all the options rather than saying, hey, my friend takes this, so can I take this? Honestly, I could go on and on about that one for a very long time, but we don't have time, so we're gonna move on from that one. All right, next one. If something's wrong, say so. People can't read your mind. I think I struggled with this for a very long time because I don't know if you guys have ever read this book. It's called 
culture maps, but essentially it's how do people communicate information, have relationships based off of the location, geographic location that they live in. So whether or not they're in the United States or in Japan or wherever they might be, people have different ways of communicating. So this was the first time I ever <laughs> truly understood why I struggle because I was a person who is very high context and that's not very common. It's a high context or low context. I'll put it up here, whatever one it is. But essentially what I'm meaning is that I assumed that you knew everything about the situation, all the details, you knew what was going on in my head, you knew what that meant to me, things like that. And if you reacted in a way because you didn't have the information, I would assume that's because that was just your opinion, not because you didn't have the information. So for a long time, I would let things be wrong. And I'm also a people pleaser, so I would just let things be wrong and assume that people knew that I thought it was wrong or I didn't like what they were doing. And that's not fair because people don't know what's going on in your mind. So you do have to communicate that to people. All right. Believe the best in people. It makes you less of an ass if you're wrong. I am not really a sunshiny person, but I have always believed the best in people. I, I am often considered like a realist, I guess. I want to believe the best in people. I love people for that reason, because there's always something that you can find good about somebody. Um, but I know it's really easy, especially if someone fits into a stereotype of someone who has hurt you in the past, to believe the worst of them, or they may have shown you time and time again that they might be the worst person in the world. I think that it is best to assume that their intentions are always for the best when communicating with them specifically. So I don't think you have to be unrealistic about it, but specifically if you're communicating with them, communicate that you believe the best in them because that's how people respond the best to you. It's also, like I said, makes you less of an ass if you're wrong because if you believe they're wrong and you tell them that, but they actually have the best intentions, then you kind of look like a huge jerk, right? All right, next one. Sleep matters. Duh, I know this is a duh, but for me, I didn't realize that I actually was an insomniac. I really struggled with sleep. Currently, I'm going through a time period of my life where I'm trying to switch up my medicine so that I'm actually getting the right amount of sleep, the right quality of sleep too. And I didn't realize that I actually struggle with insomnia. It just affects everything in your life. And when you don't sleep, you just, you don't function the best. You aren't the best version of yourself. You are stressed. You're more prone to anxiety. You're more prone to having mood swings as well. So I just, can't emphasize how important sleep is to you guys. And if that means you need to talk to a doctor to find out what's best for you so that you can get good quality sleep, do that. I just feel like a lot of the times when I was a teenager and in college, people were like, oh, it's like super cool. Like nobody would ever say this, but like it's super cool to not be sleeping. I only got two hours of sleep kind of thing. And that's actually not really cool. Next one, um, prioritize play and work. I think that we are 50-50 people. We think it's one or the other situations, but there's a lot of gray in between, right? I think it's important to make sure that you are having a defined boundary between play and work, whether or not work is school or work is work. <laughs> I think it's important to make sure that you have a defined boundary and that you honor both sides of that or else you go crazy like I used to. Next one, you are not young forever. As much as I can possibly say YOLO, that is what I mean. I was under the notion as a teenager that I would always be a teenager and you don't ever consciously say this, right? Same thing for my 20s. I'm always assuming that I will always have this body, be with this energy and be this person that I am. That's not the case. That's not how time works. Make the most of what you have when you have it. Value yourself no matter what age you are. And like I said, I mean this in the most YOLO way. Do the thing that you think that you've always wanted to do because you're not going to have time for it 10 years down the road. Just do it. Just do it. And the next one is there's nothing like a best friend. So I never thought I'd be the girl who would get into a relationship and then sort of like not talk to any of their friends because I'm a people person. But I can't say that was true. And there were lots of reasons why. But I realized that having a best friend really means a lot and shapes you as a person, someone that you could talk to outside of your significant other when things happen. I do think your significant other should be your best friend. But outside of that, I think it's important and nice to have someone who knows you and they get you and they will give you good criticism, but they'll also support you and love you endlessly. It's nice to have that outside of a significant other. I do think 
that having a best friend, if you can find someone, is very important. And I know how hard it is as an adult to find a very good best friend. And maybe you already have that in someone and you just haven't been putting a lot of energy into it. So make sure you value those people too. Next one is take photos. We moved all of our stuff. So recently I was looking through all the books that we have to make sure like, oh, are we gonna keep this? Are we gonna get rid of this one? And I found a book that I read for my now boyfriend. At the time we weren't dating, we were actually just friends. And I was reading the book for his birthday. I hated the book, I didn't wanna read the book, but my friend actually inspired me to do it. And so I was reading this book for him um, and she told me, just fill it with notes, fill it with your thoughts and put pictures in it. So I found a way to print off all these like Polaroid type photos. Honestly, they were it was kind of a crappy service, but I printed off all these photos. Flash forward to now and day, I was looking through this book and I was like, oh man, like I am so glad I did that at the time. I'm glad I have photos from that time period. I took lots of photos on my phone but I'm glad I printed them off. There's nothing like having a printed photo. All right, the next one is go to therapy. I've already made lots of videos about this, so we're gonna move on. Get the place you feel spoiled in, not the one that you think you deserve. Obviously, this has to do with money, finances, everything that you need, but for me, I often picked things and places that I felt was my level versus maybe an aspiration or something that would make me feel a little bit more spoiled. I realized that recently when we went to go clean up our old apartment that that was a place that we picked because we thought we deserved it, not because it made us feel great for living there. It was nice. Don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful. But it was a place that suited where we were at instead of where we wanted to go. And for me, atmosphere is very important. When I came back to this apartment after cleaning it, I realized this, this, this is the place that the people we've grown into are and that I want to be like. I feel so spoiled in this space, having my own space, having bigger rooms and higher ceilings and things like that. And it just means a lot. But if you have the opportunity to, don't go for what you think you deserve, but go for something that makes you feel so good. Another one, get on that phone and call. It's not that scary. I learned this one because someone in my life was going through something pretty hard. And this individual and I were supposed to be close, but we're not. Lots of hurt feelings, lots of history between us and so essentially this person and I had not grown very close to each other but they were going through something really tough in their life and I could have just let it happen and send them a text just saying like whatever within the group text that I was in. I decided, I don't know why, but I decided to call that person. A lot of the time we let ourselves be scared out of a situation because calling someone is not very usual but Calling someone shows how much you care. A text is nice and great and works for the moment. I'm not gonna knock that. Sometimes that can be important, but actually making the effort to pick up the phone, FaceTime, whatever, and call someone makes a huge difference and says how much you care and how much you love someone. If you're not in the same place as them, obviously. People can tell when you don't care. I don't know why, but I thought I was like the tricky mastermind who was able to fool everybody even though everything is on my face, into thinking that I, I was happy or that I cared about something. But the huge difference between me who doesn't care and me who cares is so obvious and it just matters. It just matters. I can't emphasize it enough to care about the things that you're invested in. Even if you don't like the things that you're invested in, showing that you care makes you a quality person. Be present in the moment that you're at, care about the situation, listen. You will see more fruit produced from that than if you just mindlessly go through something. You can still like someone and disagree with them fully. It took me a long time to get through this one. It's not that I didn't have people in my life who disagreed with me. I thought that I had to automatically dislike that person or that I had to maybe put up my barriers because they disagreed with me. And it's actually people in your life who disagree with you that edify you the most and help challenge you and show you what you truly believe in. Of course, if someone is being mean, then I don't think you should keep that individual in your life. There is good reason, there's value in keeping people who have different views than you in your life. I've never been a person to shut people out, but I didn't think I could be open to the people that disagreed with me. And it honestly took my boyfriend to help me understand that I can love someone and disagree with them. On the topic of disagreement, the next one is disagreeing with your roots, 
helps ground you. This especially comes from being in my 20s and looking back at everything I was taught growing up. I think that's something that a lot of people reflect on as they get a little bit older and away from their family and the things that they're used to, the communities that they've been around, but it's good. It's good to reflect on that and understand that things don't have to be the way that they are just because that's how they've always been. I look at the people in my life who are still in the situations that they grew up in and I can see that they have not grown or become more open because they haven't given themselves a chance to really reflect on what they view, why they view it, and who they are. I am a person of faith so this has a lot to do with that but also has to do with customs and views about different communities of individuals and just perspectives on life. I think it's important to question your beliefs, question what you were taught and where it comes from and really look into that for yourself rather than just relying on this is something I was always taught and so that you have a better understanding of what you stand by. Don't make New Year's Eve promises. I know that people are going to come for me but my boyfriend and I didn't make any New Year's Eve promises and it was a very very weird thing because I was used to making those but I asked my boyfriend if he wanted to do any promises this year, any sort of goals, resolves, resolutions. He was like, no, I want to be the same bad biatch I've always been. <laughs> so I was inspired by that to not make any. When I say this, I say it in the sense of we set ourselves up for failure a lot of the time because we set these high lofty goals of what we want to be. But you can achieve that at any point. When the clock strikes midnight, you're not suddenly a new person. You don't have to rely on a new year to become a new person. Make them weekly, yearly, whatever. Don't set goals that you're honestly never going to achieve because it's not who you are and not who you want to become. We can talk about that at some other time too, but there's that. Second to last, you are thinner than you think you are. I think that when I look at pictures of the person I was in college, when I look at pictures of the person that I was in high school, and yes, I've talked about this in my video about body image, but when you look at those photos, you realize like your view of your body wasn't actually what it was at the time and I think that's true of now and it's just a little trippy to think like I thought I was so fat in high school and I thought I was so fat in college and when I look at those photos I'm like oh my god I wish I look like that now right and in 10 years I'm gonna be like wow I wish I looked like what I looked like when I was 20. Your mind is not the truth. There's a whole thing about accepting your body and the image that you are no matter what you look like no matter what shape or weight or whatever you are. Uh, last one, very easy one. My favorite one, be kind to yourself. And this goes beyond just spoiling yourself. This is give yourself grace, give yourself forgiveness. We're taught very often to do that for other people, but not really for ourselves. I would challenge you guys in the rest of this year, in the rest of miserable 2020, how can you be kind to yourself? How can you be more grace giving? And how can you find ways to love yourself? What does that even mean? Find the ways that you give and receive love. A good portion of how I grew up was that it was better to punish yourself because you're a horrible human being and all this stuff. But I don't think we're meant to hate ourselves. Even if you're taught that you're the worst person in the world, you're not meant to hate yourself. So be kind to yourself. There's only one life that you get, so. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoy my birthday. It's obviously a national holiday for everyone. I am going to make the video about mental health and social media, and I am going to make a video reviewing Chloe Ting's workout, but I wanted to make this one first for my birthday because it's my channel, so happy birthday to me. Uh, maybe we'll all laugh at this, but let me know if there's anything that you guys learned when you were my age. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> you scared me. Know that you guys are very much loved. Bye.